An electrocardiogram, or ECG, or the Dutch or German version of the word EKG, is a tool used to visualize the electricity that flows through the heart. An ECG tracing specifically shows how the depolarization wave moves during each heartbeat, which is a wave of positive charge. And the way it looks depends on the set of electrodes you're using. This particular set of electrodes is called lead 2, for example, with one electrode on the right arm and the other on the left leg. So essentially, when the wave's moving toward the left leg electrode, you get a positive deflection, like this big positive deflection corresponding to the wave moving down into the left and right ventricles. Now, there are lots of things to look for when reading an ECG, and one of them includes figuring out if part of the heart has undergone hypertrophy or enlargement. Hypertrophy means that the heart's muscular walls increased in thickness, while dilation refers to an increase in the volume of a chamber. The term enlargement is generally used when both hypertrophy and dilation happen together, and this is what typically happens in the atria. In contrast, the ventricles often undergo hypertrophy without dilation. An ECG can show evidence of hypertrophy and enlargement in all the heart's four chambers. So let's go through them one by one. Normally, atrial depolarization produces a pretty normal-looking, symmetric P wave. In right atrial enlargement, all that extra right atrial muscle tissue results in a large P wave in leads V1 and V2, often over 1.5 millimeters, as well as in the inferior leads, leads 2, 3, and AVF, often over 2.5 millimeters. One reason why right atrial enlargement develops is that there can be a stenotic or narrowed tricuspid valve, and that makes it difficult for the right atrium to eject blood into the right ventricle, and in response, the right atrium enlarges. In left atrial enlargement, the left atrium has extra muscle tissue, and that results in a P wave with two peaks in lead two, with the entire thing stretching out over 110 milliseconds, with a gap of over 40 milliseconds separating the two peaks. In lead V1, the P wave is biphasic, meaning that it looks like a hill with a valley alongside it. The negative portion is usually one millimeter deep and lasts for more than 40 milliseconds. Left atrial enlargement also develops from a stenotic valve, but this time it's the mitral valve on the left side, which causes the left atrium to get bigger. Normally, the QRS complex is mostly negative in lead V1 because the large left ventricle, which carries the greatest amount of muscle tissue, is oriented down and away from this electrode. In right ventricular hypertrophy, the thicker right ventricle helps to counterbalance the left ventricle, and so it makes lead V1 more positive. More specifically, it makes the R wave bigger, which is the upward deflection of the QRS complex. In fact, a dominant R wave in V1 is a classic sign of right ventricular hypertrophy, and it's defined as one that's over 7 millimeters tall, or 7 little boxes, and is larger than the S wave, making the R to S ratio greater than 1. In V5 and V6, another classic sign of right ventricular hypertrophy is a dominant S wave, meaning that it's over 7 millimeters deep, again, 7 little boxes, and bigger than the R wave, making the R to S ratio less than 1. Typically, there's also right axis deviation in right ventricular hypertrophy, resulting in an axis of plus 110 degrees or more. In right ventricular hypertrophy, the QRS complex is less than 120 milliseconds, meaning that it's not longer than normal. This is important because it means that the changes can't be the result of something like a right bundle branch block, which would cause a longer than normal QRS complex. Right ventricular hypertrophy can develop for a number of reasons, a common one being pulmonary hypertension, which makes sense because the right ventricle has to build up muscle to push blood against higher pressure into the lungs. In left ventricular hypertrophy, the pattern is almost the opposite of what happens in right ventricular hypertrophy. Lead V1 has even more positive charge traveling away from it than usual, making the S wave really deep. Meanwhile, lead V5 and V6 are located on the side of the left ventricle, and therefore have an enormous R wave. The most commonly used voltage criteria to identify left ventricular hypertrophy is that adding up the S wave in V1 and the tallest R wave in V5 or V6 has to be over 35 millimeters, or 35 little boxes, 
Additional criteria include things like having an R wave that goes on for longer than usual, typically over 50 milliseconds, as well as ST segment elevation in V1, and ST segment depression and T wave inversion in V5 and V6. And these are all signs that the left ventricle is straining during muscle contraction. Left ventricular hypertrophy commonly develops due to systemic hypertension, or elevated systemic blood pressure, since the left ventricle needs more muscle so that it can eject blood against higher pressures. Alright, as a quick recap. Right atrial enlargement shows a big P wave in lead 2 and V1, whereas left atrial enlargement has a biphasic P wave in lead V1 and a double humped P wave in lead 2. Right ventricular hypertrophy shows a big R wave in V1 and a big S wave in V5 and V6, whereas left ventricular hypertrophy shows the opposite, a huge S wave in V1 and a huge R wave in V5 and V6, adding up to over 35 millimeters, 